to end this year's dialogue, we will, as always, invite all our attending laureates for a last panel. The topic of today is my best teacher, and the moderate, moderator is Juline Sirat. All right, this is going to be a bit of a lightning round, and we'll go around the horn, and I'm going to ask each of you to share some words about your best teacher. Keep in mind, we have about 10 minutes for this, and I know many of you can tell us a lot about people who have influenced you and inspired you, but Francis, tell us about your best teacher. Well, it turns out my best teacher is not a person. The best teacher for chemistry is the best chemistry of the biological world. And um, I realize that I have learned tremendous amount from people, but I've learned much more from observation and from getting out and experiencing. And so many people have been talking about experiential learning. If you just observe what's going on in the natural world, there's so much innovation, so much creativity, and so much to learn about how to build a sustainable world. Oh, I think that's wonderful. I mean, it's right around us in our environment if we're there to see it. Ben, your best teacher. Yeah, uh, uh, going on in the, in the same context as Francis, you know, I grew up on a farm, and as a small kid, I think, nature around me was probably my best teacher. That is where it all started, where I asked endless questions to my father and mother. And on the farm, you know, there is so much to discover. How is it possible that from such a tiny seed, a big sunflower grows? And then, of course, when I was at the university and I became a chemist, I think I have to mention one person, Professor Hans Winberg. He was American and he stimulated us so much to discover my own molecules, to make my own molecules. And, and that opened for me a completely new world to be able to go beyond mother nature to design molecules of my own that never existed before. That was absolutely a teaching experience, you know, to do experiments in the lab and to discover something completely unexpected. I think that was the best teacher of all. That's wonderful. I can imagine as a child, you were the child that always asked why, 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 and was probably never satisfied with the answer, always looking for more. Um, Constantine. Yeah, probably it drove my parents crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Constantine, your best teacher. Uh, I think I was extremely lucky in my life. So I had fantastic teachers in, in, my, in my school, though it was absolutely normal school, nothing special, but they somehow they really picked on picked me from the from the crowd. But if I really have to choose one, I think it would be my my PhD supervisor and colleague and and, and friend uh, Andre Gang with whom we, we shared the the prize later. And it's really uh, it's um, very difficult to, to teach science because there are many physicists around, but there are much there are much less uh, scientists because you cannot teach how to do science by the by the textbooks. You really you either have this this hunger for for knowledge inside you, or or you don't. And but. Uh, hunger for knowledge is is great, but you also need to know where to where to search for those new phenomena, and that's something what, what I learned from from Andre. Okay, that's lovely. Um, Dieter, any thoughts on your best teacher? Oh, it's it's me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, actually, um, well, my first. Best teacher is my family in a way because they have been very supportive uh, in a way that they left, left me to do what I wanted and to exercise all the freedom I could have. And, and since I was extremely curious, I can tell you I did a lot of experimental setup in my home and in my house and in the garden. And so I'm, this is really the first one. The, the second one is I think I had, I had a long series of, of teachers. I cannot really a point to a specific one, but what they did is something really crucial to me. I think they just managed to convey to me that learning is fun. 
And I know always that this feeling, and I'm always trying to, to, to give that to the others. I mean, learning is so much fun, and you can do so much when, you are, when you're learning. So these are, to me, my kind of uh, most impactful yeah, events. Of course, there's a lot of books and, and, and people I can name, but that's exactly this kind of surrounding that makes me, I think, what I am. Okay, all right, that's lovely as well. Um, and Donna? Best teacher. Well, like it's already been said, I had a lot of really good teachers, so it's hard to pick. Um, I'll just give a couple examples. In high school, um, my grade nine science teacher, and she was also my grade 13 chemistry teacher. Uh, her husband was a chemistry professor at the university, and so she would bring in uh, little experiments to do in front of us. And she, and she was all about the wonder and all about the excitement of it and all about that. She also, the one time I was on a high school band trip and had to um, miss the test, and a bunch of us did, uh, she brought in chocolate bars for all of us after class when we were doing it, you know, after hours. She says, you can't think great on an empty stomach, and she made sure we all had our chocolate bar, which I thought was so cute and sweet of her. But on the other hand, unlike all of my colleagues here, uh, in high school science, I was sometimes very lazy, and we had to do some kind of science for a project. And I don't even remember what I did, but I didn't put my heart and soul in it. And I've been asked a lot, especially as a woman, you know, did I get encouragement even if I was a girl? And I had a male uh, physics teacher and he sat me down and went, Don, I'm so disappointed in you. For heaven's sakes, I know you are so much better than this. <laughs> and it's not acceptable. You should be doing so much more. So I've had teachers on both sides and uh, you need both sometimes. Well, that's an example of being around someone who perhaps sees something in you that you don't recognize yourself and they help to bring that out of you by encouraging you. And what I notice is that irrespective of whether you're talking about a specific person or an environment, all of you have really talked about the creativity um, and, and sort of being in environments where you can let your curiosity grow um, and, and these creative environments. And does anybody want to reflect on just the environment? In addition to the teacher, there's something about environments. And Francis, you talked a little bit about that. Well, I'm lucky to work at an institution that's very small, but filled with brilliant people. And the environment is one where science is fun. Uh, we are so lucky that we actually have a job to do lifelong learning and to do what we find best. I love to be surrounded by people like that and that environment where risk taking and innovation are encouraged is an incredibly exciting place to be. And I think Ben, you mentioned always asking why, and I bet you still do that today. So feeling safe in the environment to always ask the question that we might think, well, that might be a silly question, but just something about the environment. Yeah. Can you reflect to that? Yeah. Uh, I mentioned already when I grew up and my parents were a great stimulus, uh, as were my nine brothers and sisters, you know, uh, that was a great environment. But uh, then what I really want to emphasize, it is a privilege to work with these students every day, these young talents that question you, that are creative, that are uncompromised, and we stimulate them, you know, to make also mistakes and ask questions all the time. And this is absolutely wonderful. And I learned so much from them, you know, to be in such an environment is absolutely wonderful. Well, that hits on the idea of the lifelong um, uh, working. And Constantine, again, a little bit about the environment. Um, yes, people are important, but environments are as well. Uh, absolutely. Environment is really crucial, but uh, it is crucial in, in, in many aspects. So it's uh, sharing, uh, sharing ideas and generating ideas is, is much easier in an environment. But probably the, uh, one of the way I, I use it is basically the reflection of your, of your own mind. The idea just thought and the idea spoken out are, are, are completely different. It's something how our brain is wired. When you're trying to formulate your idea to, uh, to explain something to your colleague, it really for, it, it forms new connections in your brain, and you and you and you start to, to see it much more much more clearly. So I, I use it basically as a tool. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that emphasizes the importance of um, you know if you're doing research. Some of you are you know obviously researchers, but the idea about teaching as well and being able to communicate these complex problems that we're all struggling with 
to students. And sometimes that also helps you reflect upon the course that you're taking in your research or the science that you're doing. Um, Dieter, you commented, I think you commented about family and the importance of family and siblings in, in motivating you as well. Well, yeah, I, I like to spend a bit of time on this environment because I think this is one of the main challenges of education these days. I think I was very lucky because I was born in one of the richest countries of the world, which is Switzerland, that offer free uh, educations to all uh, its citizens. And, uh, and even more, in my days, I was lucky to be a boy uh, because I still believe here there is a major problem that we need to fix in the society. So the impact on the, on the environment or the family is absolutely essential. And I would certainly love to see progress on that. I think we're certainly missing a lot of people because they're not have the chance to benefit for this good environment. The brain is outstanding. They have an immense capability, but just missing them because they are in the low income countries. They don't have access to educations and there is still a major gender issue that we need to fix. Mm -hmm. So I think family can be extremely crucial here because family is the close cycle that help you and push you and support you when it's difficult. But in some cases, family is not enough. Mm -hmm. I think the society has to work together for that. So, um, Don, I'm going to turn to you. You'll have the last word. We spent a lot of time today talking about, you know, um, equity in terms of teaching and education. And you talked a little bit about your role as being uh, a, a young woman in a hardcore scientific environment. We just heard Dieter say uh, that we still need to do more environments to foster diversity and to give everybody an equal chance and protect potentially f a young girls who want to go up. Do you have any you know, words that we can kind of hold on to here at the end? Well, again, I guess I grew up, you know, very lucky. I grew up, my high school, the three, the top three math prizes all went to girls and nobody said that's really weird. So I haven't had to uh, face these problems that so many other people have had. And so I think I wish everybody had the kind of upbringing that I had, that everybody, it's public education here and everybody's welcome at the table. And hopefully we get to that in a more worldwide way. I would like to say during these COVID times, I haven't enjoyed talking to my students online. I would rather be in the lab with them. On the other hand, I'm talking to students around the world now uh, through these uh, types of events. And so in some ways we're opening it up and making it a much more equal uh, playing field uh, during these COVID times with all of this online platforms. All right, well with that, um, thanks a lot for sharing your own personal reflections about favorite teachers, favorite environments, uh, creativity, and um, we'll take that to heart. And that concludes the Nobel Week Dialogue 2020. I'm Lisa Kiesebom. It's been a pleasure to be your host today. Thank you so much for watching and contributing. And back to London and Adam Smith. Thank you so much, Lisa. So the goal of the Nobel Week Dialogue is fundamentally to be thought provoking. And while we hope we've entertained you, we also very much hope we've made you think. It was really lovely to hear from some of you during the course of the meeting, and I just wish we could have heard from more of the audience. In line with that um, important and challenging comment made by Seppo Poe in his interview earlier, that no voice, sorry, that every voice is equal and no voice should be unheard. I want to thank three groups. Of course, the participants for giving us their time and their energy today. It was very kind of them to be here and to make themselves available, and we loved being with them. To the audience who, by being present, have made this a truly global meeting, thank you all very much indeed. And of course, to our partners, without whom none of this would be possible. Thank you so much for your continuing support. And it only remains to say that we all very much look forward to, to seeing you again for the next Nobel Week Dialogue on the 9th of December 2021 in Gothenburg, when we very much hope that the majority of us will be on stage. Thank you for listening and goodbye.